Hello! Yes, I'm changing my World Cup predictions. I warned you all that I would. For those of you that don't know, I made a very early prediction video right when the draw happened, and there still were a decent amount of teams which were to be determined to qualify. Recently, we have just discovered that Wales, Australia, and Costa Rica will all be new additions to the tournament. So of course I'm going to be changing my predictions, but not only that, we also just had a massive international break with the UEFA Nations League, along with some other friendlies all across the world. Some people might be arguing that these friendlies and Nations League matches don't really mean anything, as some players even admitted that they were just tired from the season and didn't want to deal with this international break. Well, say what you want, but this is everyone's most recent assessment of every single one of these national teams. Obviously, not all of them played their number one starters throughout every single match, some rotated and all that, but it's still a decent assessment to see how well these teams can potentially do at the World Cup. In my last video, I got a lot of love, but also tons of hate. Respect to you guys for being so passionate about your nation, but just keep in mind, this is just my opinion. All right, let me know yours in the comments below. This is just a simple prediction video. We'll see how accurate this ends up being, and also, I probably will be doing another one. Just my updated thoughts based on this international break and these newly qualified teams. Obviously, form is temporary, so I'll be judging some of these national teams' international break more than others. Without any further ado, let's get into it. Starting off with Group A, as always, with Qatar, Senegal, Ecuador, and Netherlands. For some reason, Qatar did not take part in this international break. Their last friendlies were in March, scheduled in Doha against Bulgaria and Slovenia. Two decent European teams, but... Neither of them are in the World Cup. Senegal were focused on the AFCON qualifiers. They had to play Benin and Rwanda. They beat Benin 3-1. They beat Rwanda 1-0. Ecuador was able to get some exposure against the African teams. They played a friendly against Nigeria first, won 1-0. Then they drew with Mexico 0-0. And then they played Cape Verde where they got another 1-0 victory. And Netherlands had a fantastic international break. One of the best teams in League A in the Nations League. Just one draw and apart from that, all three wins. One of their wins ended up being very massive, beating Belgium 4-1. Nellens this international break have showed us that they definitely mean business and they easily can go far in this World Cup. They've got some of the best defenders ever, obviously Van Dijk, De Ligt, De Vrij, Dumfries, and so many incredible backup options as well, like Ake, plus loads of young players playing in the Dutch League. Their attack in this Nations League as well has shown that they're willing to fight till the end. Lots of last minute drama going Netherlands way. Not only do Netherlands look like the best team on paper in this group, they also currently look like they're in the best run of form. I'm gonna have to give them first place. I wouldn't necessarily be surprised if one of these other teams ends up topping them, especially Senegal, one of the best teams in Africa on paper, but to me Netherlands just look like the favorites. Second place should be interesting. Ecuador, my main criticism for them is that they seem to struggle when they go away. They play brilliantly at home, but Obviously, all of their matches in Qatar are going to be away. Might be a bit of a challenge for them, especially since they're going to have to play the hosts in that group. But these friendlies have shown us that Ecuador can definitely handle the African teams. Maybe they can beat Senegal at the end. Senegal got knocked out of the World Cup 2018 in the most unfortunate fashion. Literally, down to the wire, off of yellow cards, because they had the same stats with Japan on absolutely everything. Maybe something like that will happen again, going Ecuador's way. I don't know, but at the same time, one of the best African teams to bank on at the moment is Senegal. Not only have they had a victorious year, like I said, the best squad on paper in Africa. Sadio Mane, Mendy from Chelsea, Idrissa Gay, Koulibaly, list goes on and on. Senegal is absolutely stacked. I think it's going to go down to the wire with them in Ecuador. I know in the past I said that you shouldn't underestimate Qatar as they are the hosts, but all these sides look absolutely determined to do bits in the World Cup. I might have to change things up. Not too much compared to my last prediction. I'm going to have to say Senegal make it out with Netherlands at second place. Third, I'll give it to Ecuador. And fourth, Qatar. Ecuador, though, please prove me wrong. Definitely one of the more exciting underdogs in this World Cup. So much exciting young talent, and the defense can definitely pull through. You've got the likes of Incapier, Bayer Leverkusen, Estupignan, and Villarreal. So many players to go on about, but yeah, those are my predictions for now. Let's move on to Group B with England, Iran, the USA, and the newly added team, Wales, who have just beaten Ukraine in the World Cup qualifier playoffs. England, since the beginning, looked like clear favorites in this group, but we all know they have been absolutely terrible in the Nations League. 
some might be saying, oh, they can still definitely easily handle this group. I mean, look at the quality on all these teams. England possessed so much more. Well, England did lose to Hungary twice, one of them being 4-0 this international break. Maybe the USA can actually scrape through a draw against England. Or maybe Wales can top England in another group stage run, similar to what happened in Euro 2016. Or maybe Iran's brilliant attack can expose the English defense. Very hard to see that happening, especially after that tremendous Euro run. But maybe those results against Hungary have shown us that it might not be coming home. England are currently at relegation zone in the Nations League. Do I think they're going to crumble that hard in the World Cup? I still think when it comes to the big tournaments, Southgate knows what he's doing. Lots of depth in the England squad shown to struggle this international break. But I think they can pull their strings together. They'll come back from this. It's six months from now. And Southgate's time in England has shown that he always seems to have a solid run in these international tournaments. England fans, I totally understand if you're worried, but I think you still got this group on lockdown. I'm gonna say England grab first place. Second place, last time I went bold and said Iran. I really heavily praised this manager and the attack, Taremi and Azmoun, brilliant partnership up top. You've also got Jahang Banch, who seems to be the glue to the team, but the morale for the Iranian national team at the moment just doesn't seem to be too high. Struggled to organize friendlies this international break as they had one canceled against Canada, but they managed to organize something against Algeria where they lost 2-1. to one. Don't get me wrong, Algeria is a fantastic side, so on the surface this might not look that bad, but Algeria were playing their B team in this, Iran were playing all those players I just talked about. Jahang Banksh, Azmoun, and Taremi were all up top. I know they were also playing Nuraf Khan, a fullback in center back, so maybe that did cost them. But if Iran wants to compete properly in this World Cup, they cannot be losing matches like this when Algeria throw on their subs and reserves. Also, the Iranian fans have seemed to be protesting the Croatian coach, Dragan Skocic, who I have been praising a lot. I mean, this guy did absolutely brilliantly in the Asia qualifiers. I guess the Iranians just got too excited after Carlos Queiroz announced that he is leaving the Egyptian national team as they definitely want him back after that very solid 2018 experience in Russia. The Iranians also seem to be losing hope for the national team. I don't think they're going to get second this time. I'm sorry. In fact, I'm just going to say it right now. I think they'll get fourth place. I know that's a huge change from my previous prediction, but the USA have definitely been in some decent form lately, and they definitely can scrape a leaf to get out of this. And also, Wales was the one team that I very much feared that could change the complexion of this group, and I think they will. Sure, the Welsh national team on paper doesn't look as dangerous compared to the other European teams, but we've already seen this national team be doubted in Euro 2016. They had a phenomenal run then. Wales haven't qualified for the World Cup since 1958. So they're definitely going to want to go out with a bang, especially due to the fact that this is definitely going to be Gareth Bale's last international tournament, or most likely at least. USA in this international break kicked things off brilliantly, beating Morocco 3-0. They drew with Uruguay 0-0, which obviously is a bit underwhelming, but not bad. That's one of the best teams in South America. Wales are in relegation zone at the moment in the Nations League, but they obviously were putting all the eggs in their basket to that World Cup qualifier playoff, as that's what was played in that international break. I'm torn about this one. I almost want to say that it could be a similar occurrence to what I said for Group A, where second and third could genuinely share points at the end, and it could be separated on goal differentials. If I gotta pick one, I'm gonna go with the USA. I could definitely see Wales going out with a bang in this World Cup, as they haven't qualified in so freaking long. Despite USA's loss to El Salvador, they have been closing down a lot of these teams they've been playing defensively very, very well. I feel like defensively the USA can hold off some of these teams and then break them on a potential counterattack. They're definitely missing a solid number nine, but I think the other players can do the job. Let's see it, USA. Damn, I really didn't think I'd be changing my mind about the USA qualifying for the next round at the time, but I definitely think now they have a better chance than before. Now let's take a look at Group C. We've got Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, and Poland. I don't think I need to elaborate on the group winners that much. I'm going with Argentina. To me at the moment, they definitely look like one of the World Cup favorites. Very, very organized side compared to the past very much have improved since the last World Cup. It seems like Messi cannot be happier with the national team at the moment. With him still balling out, yes, he had a quote-unquote bad season, but he still got loads and loads of assists at club level. Done bits for the national team in this international break. Juan de Finalissimo was one of the best players on the pitch. Scored five goals against Estonia. Great, great attacking options. I'll be curious to see if Julian Alvarez even makes an appearance, but you still got Loturo Martinez, 
Di Maria, great midfielder options. They pull my personal favorite. Their defense is looking so much better compared to previous years, and we could see a masterclass yet again from their goalkeeper, Martinez. Not for those other three. Most people probably going to be picking either Mexico or Poland to get second place. I feel like it's a fight between those two. Lots of people ruling out Saudi Arabia, although we shouldn't be. They're a neighboring country with Qatar. They can definitely be familiar with this climate. They killed it in the World Cup qualifiers. They just had two friendlies against South American teams that weren't in the World Cup. Colombia and Venezuela, and they did lose to both of them. I'm not too convinced with Saudi Arabia. They gotta rely on their defense to pull through, but all these teams look like they can cause damage to them, so I'm gonna say they're last. It's between Mexico and Poland, like I said, and I am very torn about it, actually, because both of these teams aren't really impressing me as of now. Early on in this international break, Mexico were able to beat Nigeria 2-1, which is impressive, but then they lost to Uruguay 3-0. They then drew to Ecuador 0-0, so they failed to beat two South American teams that are in the World Cup. Poland, on the other hand, in the Nations League, are in third at the moment. They had a decent start, beating Wales 2-1, but I wouldn't be too impressed with that win. They played so many reserve players as they were mainly focused on qualifying for the World Cup. They haven't played that match yet against Ukraine. Following that, they lost to Belgium 6-1, which was a brutal defeat. Then they drew with Netherlands 2-2, which I guess is a solid result, but then on the final match, they, they lost to Belgium 1-0 even though they weren't playing a lot of their starters. And I said in my previous prediction video, I think this was a big test for their new manager, Mishnevich. Polish fans obviously seem excited about him as he was able to beat Sweden in the World Cup qualifiers 2-0. I know Belgium is a top team, but still losing 6-1 is not that convincing. Poland don't normally do well in international tournaments. This is their chance to prove themselves without a doubt. They have a phenomenal squad just picking up Matty Cash. Obviously, they got the best striker in the world, Lewandowski, one of the most well-known keepers, Szczesny, Zielinski from Napoli. Poland have a squad that have so much potential. It's surprising that they don't do well. And meanwhile, Mexico has that World Cup history where they always seem to do well in the group stage and then crash and burn in the round of 16s. The interesting thing about Mexico is they haven't beaten a World Cup team in their last eight matches against them. Originally, I said Mexico could continue their round of 16 cursed history, make it out of the group stage, but this time they truly just might fall short. Poland looking like they still have potential to improve from here. I'm going to say as of now, Poland look like they are on road to potentially make it to the round of 16s. If you're judging off history alone, obviously Poland don't look like the favorites as Mexico always make it out of the group stage. But I think history will be broken this year. As of now, this could change again. I'm sorry, Mexico fans. There's still room for improvement, but I'm also not convinced with your manager, Martino. Good luck, though. Now for Group D, the group with France. Will the World Cup curse happen now? Australia are one of the new teams in the tournament, along with Denmark and Tunisia. Earlier, I said that Denmark would top this group and France would fall short to second. And after these Nations League results, that prediction doesn't look that crazy. France have the most incredible squad. The depth is nuts. But the champion's curse is something many people are predicting to happen. But it seems so unlikely to. Benzema and Mbappe are some of the best forwards in the world. Christopher Nkunku is also making a scene for the national team. This guy had a phenomenal year at Leipzig. Even if somehow Lloris isn't in form, Magnon has been killing it at club level. But yeah, with all that, somehow France sit at fourth in their Nations League group. Denmark also in their Nations League group. It's not looking too good for France. I'm gonna have to keep Denmark at first. They've just been so phenomenal. There's no necessarily standout player, but that's what makes them so great at the same time. What an absolute phenomenal unit. Their fullback Myla can be so decisive at moments. Ericsson's obviously gonna be very motivated to do bits at the national team. Their goalkeeper Schmeichel is just an absolute warrior. Hopefully Kerr gets fit as we haven't been seeing him lately, but his injury should be ending soon, I think. They still got Christensen also at the back. I can go on and on about this Danish side and I really think they can still secure that first place spot. They also obviously beat France. Now people are arguing that France were rotating their squad around a lot. They had a lot of injuries, which is true, but this is France. The depth is insane. Stuff like this shouldn't matter. The other two sides in this group, according to many neutrals, look very weak, but you can't rule out either of them. Starting off with Australia, that World Cup qualifier matchup that they had with Peru was insane. I thought Australia would be outplayed, but they actually looked like a very solid side at moments in the match, even stats with Peru. They took it to penalties. They were so disappointing in the World Cup qualifiers that... I really didn't think they could do it. I had all the belief in Peru that they'd be able to do the job as they were pretty impressive in the South America World Cup qualifiers. And those qualifiers are very difficult. 
bravo to Australia. And it just shows you can't underestimate this side. Peru, I think, could have had a lot of impact in this group. But now it's Australia's turn to make a difference. Going on to Tunisia. You gotta give this side some credit. They look like the most slept on team in the tournament. But what do they do this international break? They beat Japan 3-0. And they beat Chile 2-0. And you can't say lineups were an issue. Japan actually put out a lot of their starters. Nobody should be writing off Tunisia this year, I'll tell you that. They're going to put off amazing fights in this World Cup. Even if they go out to fourth, I think they'll keep it low scoring. I already know I'm going to get loads of comments saying I'm taking into consideration these friendlies way too much. And although players might not be playing to their absolute hard outs like in the Euros or the World Cup, I definitely wouldn't say that they don't care at all about this competition. Guys, I'm going for the World Cup curse. Which team do I think will top France or will both of them top France? At the moment, I think Tunisia are the ones to do so. I'd love to see Australia be the one to prove me wrong, fight their way through. I see them having exciting moments in this World Cup, but we won't see any Tim Cahill masterclasses out there. I'm saying Australia get fourth, France get third, Tunisia get second. Might be a bold take, but that's going to be my most major quote-unquote upset in this video. Now for Group B, we've got Spain, Costa Rica, Germany, and Japan. Spain and Germany look like absolute favorites in this, but... A huge talking point for both national teams, actually, is they don't have a solid center forward. Werner and Murata get memed a lot. I still think they're solid options, but considering the rest of the talent both of these countries possess, it might not be their strongest point. And even though both of them do look like favorites in this group, they shouldn't take Costa Rica or Japan lightly. With potentially these center forward issues that both of these teams could possess, could be Costa Rica's advantage, especially due to the fact that they have one of the best players in between the sticks, Kaylor Navas, he can definitely have an impact in this World Cup, no doubt about it. Could we see another CONCACAF fairy tale with Costa Rica as well? They topped the group of death in 2014, we can't forget about that. I don't want to necessarily rule them out from doing the same in this World Cup, but I'm going to predict that that won't happen. I'm going to say that Spain and Germany do make it out of this group. Both have solid lines of defense, both have very great midfielders that are gifted in their own ways. But we can't necessarily say that Germany have a terrible finishing problem. I mean, they just beat Italia 5-2. I believe I said this last time, but I think Germany have what it takes to top the group. I already praised them before. Hansi Flick is a fantastic manager. I don't know if they're still the favorites for me to win the whole thing, but I definitely think Germany can have a fantastic run in this World Cup. Every team's got to be fearful to face this side. So I'm not necessarily comfortable about that pick, and I would very much not be surprised if Spain do it instead. And Enrique is also a fantastic manager as well. Very impressed with his Euro success. I did doubt him a bit with where it looked like he had an absolute rebuild with the side. But no, he's still pulling through even with the youngsters. I could definitely see even Pedri having young player of the tournament in this World Cup. Costa Rica is definitely going to be an interesting team in this World Cup. They could easily crash out like they did in 2018, or we could see them excelling like in 2014. I do see them maybe grabbing a draw against one of these big teams, which could potentially be Spain, and that's what draws them back to second. Japan, like I said, got absolutely destroyed by Tunisia, but before that, they had to play Ghana, and they beat them 4-1. They lost to Brazil earlier 1-0, and they beat Paraguay earlier 4-1. Very exciting national team, lots of underrated players. I genuinely feel bad putting either of these teams in fourth, but I'm just going to say I think it's going to be Costa Rica. They didn't convince me enough against New Zealand. They honestly barely hung out in that match. New Zealand played very, very well. Very surprised about New Zealand's performance. But yeah, I could see Japan's electrifying style of play break down Costa Rica potentially where they can grab three points from them. So that's why I'm saying Japan top Costa Rica. We shall see. Best of luck to all the teams, especially the underdogs. I'm rooting for you guys. Now for Group F. The group Hrvatska is in. Will they be able to get out of the group this time? It's going to be tough against the mighty Belgium. A very interesting Moroccan side and the underrated CONCACAF team coming into this that everybody should be fearing, Canada. All of these teams started off with their international break being absolutely terrible. Morocco losing to the USA 3-0, which was a terrible sign as they're playing another CONCACAF team in their group, obviously. Canada, who did better than the USA this year in the CONCACAF World Cup qualifiers. Croatia lost to Austria 
a European side that isn't even in the World Cup. Belgium lost to Netherlands 4-1, which I stated earlier. And Canada, a side where I applauded them with the best morale, went on strike, actually, protesting the pay that they're receiving. I believe it's been resolved now, but like I said, they had some friendlies cancelled. They ended up beating Curazzo 4-0, but then they lost to Honduras 2-1. A lot of people still seem to believe in Canada to be that underdog team that can tell a beautiful tale in the biggest tournament ever. And the side still has a lot of great quality that can knock down these amazing teams. Alfonso Davies, one of the best fullbacks. Jonathan David, phenomenal striker. Estacchio, very underrated midfielder. But my problem with this team is I feel like they really haven't had a lot of exposure outside of CONCACAF. That friendly against Iran could have potentially been a great test for them. I genuinely think they gotta schedule some friendlies against European teams, even if they're not in the World Cup. At the same time though, that could all lead to an even bigger mystery. Can Canada hold off against a Belgian side that a lot of people seem to be doubting now, but they still have the quality, they still have some great players. Courtois just won the Champions League. If he plays like that in the World Cup, Belgium are set. Aiden Hazard is trying to regain his form. De Bruyne is still one of the best midfielders. Lukaku, even with his Chelsea struggles, he's still a phenomenal striker. The only issue maybe is Belgium's defense, obviously, but if they got Courtois between the sticks, I think he can save their ass a decent amount of times. Belgium might not be favorites to win this tournament. They were in 2018. Definitely not the same caliber as then, but I still think they can make it out of this group. Morocco shall be a mystery as well. This side has so much potential. The quality is there. They got Bono, one of the best goalkeepers in La Liga. I mean, he actually won the trophy for the best goalkeeper in La Liga this season. He currently plays for Sevilla, and he's an absolute monster. The match against USA doesn't suggest it, but they have a really solid defensive line on paper. Biggest name, obviously, Hakimi on PSG. With Halil Hojic in charge, Ziyech remains retired from the national team. And I think it's a huge blow to not have him there. I'd be a lot more scared of Morocco if he were there. And Nessity is a solid striker, but for the national team, he's very, very disappointing. I really would like to bring one of these underdogs to the top, make it to the knockouts, but as of now, I just don't see it. Not gonna lie, I keep changing my mind about this group. I think it's gonna be a mixed bag for sure. Croatia, I didn't even get into them. I am so happy with how they've been doing lately. Yes, they lost 3-0 to Austria, but after that, Zlatko Dalic figured out the back line. The stereotype for Croatia is that we're just an aging squad that clearly has some gaps in the national team now that Mario Mandzukic, Ivan Rakitic, and Subasic have all retired. Well, no. They're just looking at Luka Modric and making that generalization. There are so many great youngsters coming in, especially in the back line. We saw Stanisic, Šutalo, Ehrlich all have fantastic displays for the national team. They held off clean sheets against Denmark and France. The only struggle Croatia will have, and I've said it for other teams already, is they don't have a great center forward option. That's where we miss Mario Mandzukic. Budimir for the national team really seems like a filler player at this point. But the way Croatia have been playing, they can definitely make these games narrow and win them. Get some 1-0 results and potentially even top the group. The midfielders and wingers still have lots of potential to get the Golazos for the Croatian national team. I already know everyone's going to come at me that I'm biased for this pick, but I'm going to go bold and say Croatia can top the group. I really doubted the national team so much before. I even felt a bit risky putting them at second, but this international break really has me more hopeful for them. Croatia in Euro 2016 and the World Cup 2018 absolutely bossed the group stage. In 2016, they were in a group with Spain, and in 2018, they were in a group with Argentina. I am worried for Croatia in the knockouts, don't get me wrong, especially due to the fact that we're potentially going to play Spain or Germany, which definitely look like favorites in that matchup, but... I'm going to say that Croatia can top the group. I'm going bold. We'll see if I'm that confident by the time the World Cup is about to roll around. I'm not going to go for a massive upset here, although I'd love to see it. Morocco, Canada, prove me wrong. But I'm going to say that Belgium grabs second place. Listen, Morocco, I don't normally say this for every national team. And I hate to do this to a Balkan brother, but... Halil Hojic is not the answer for the national team. If you guys are placing before the World Cup, get Ziyech back. Get organized yet again. This side has too much potential, like I said. I think they can get out of this group. But for now, it seems like he's staying. I'm seeing a lot of Moroccan fans throwing me rumors about this, but nothing seems to be true yet. He is staying for the national team. So I'm going to say that Canada get third, Morocco fourth. Moroccans, don't hate me. But the way Morocco already played to a CONCACAF team that did worse than Canada this year just goes to show. Sorry, Morocco. Best of luck. Group G. I absolutely love this group. Brazil, 
Serbia, Switzerland, and Cameroon. I'm going to go basic for a fellow South American giant. Brazil are getting first, similar to my Argentina reasoning. This side, along with Argentina, they were both undefeated in the South American qualifiers. Brazil's depth is insane. Their scorelines have been crazy as well. Two Premier League goalkeepers playing for the best Premier League clubs. Some people might be questioning their defense as Militao hasn't had the best season. Some people aren't convinced with the likes of Lodi and all that. But I think they still got options and time to sort that out. And it's not like Serbia's or Switzerland's or even Cameroon's have been any better. But Thiago Silva at his age is still killing it, so... Give the defense some respect. An insane amount of attackers to choose from. Vinicius Jr. also having a phenomenal season. I'm definitely missing some players here and there, but you get the point. Brazil is stacked. A potential World Cup favorite for me. And I think they will top this group for sure. Although they definitely shouldn't underestimate these other teams. Serbia and Switzerland, I've always said, are the two most underrated teams in Europe. I think people are starting to rate Serbia now as they've realized how insane their squad has become. Their attack is crazy, but their defense is a bit poor. But Dusan Vlahovic, like I said, equaled Ronaldo's calendar year record in the Serie A. Dusan Tadic nearly getting as many assists as Messi in a single calendar year. Mitrovic getting an absolutely insane record in the championship, though most goals in a single season by a long shot. He's going to have that record set for a very long time. Switzerland this international break had been disappointing and also before that in their friendlies they didn't do so well. In the past the Swiss side didn't look that strong but they came together collectively very well. I mean they qualified for the World Cup automatically over Italy. That just says it all. Jan Sommer is an absolute beast even though Borussia Mönchengladbach struggled a lot this season he still was a monster. But I am worried for some of the other players in particular, such as Akanji, who hasn't been impressive for Dormant, and now Switzerland as well. Switzerland still usually have that magic in them in these tournaments. And last time they played Serbia in 2018, they beat them. It was a very dramatic match, as we all remember. And due to the fact that that match was so dramatic, I do think Serbia will make a comeback against Switzerland head-to-head. -head. I definitely see Serbia just playing with their absolute heart out in that match. And I'm going to say Serbia grabs second in this group. Switzerland falls short to third and Cameroon finish last, although I didn't dive into Cameroon yet, look. The national team refuses to take Matip, one of their best center back options, because he didn't want to play in the Africa Cup of Nations. I think that's a huge loss, they still have some other quality, great attackers, Abu Bakar, Toko Akambi, absolutely clutch in many, many moments. In tournaments such as the Africa Cup of Nations, although they secured third place, they were the hosts. And in some matches, they really cut it close, even to the likes of Comoros. I don't want to outrule Cameroon per se. Maybe they could get third over Switzerland based on the way Switzerland have been playing recently. They only grabbed one win in the Nations League, and that was at the very end to Portugal after getting battered by every other team before, including losing to Portugal 4-0. But I think Switzerland will be able to pick up their form a tad bit. Cameroon just getting outclassed from these teams. Maybe they could put off some good fights, especially to the likes of Switzerland and Serbia. This prediction hasn't changed for me. Brazil first, Serbia second, Switzerland third, Cameroon fourth. Let's move on to that final group. Group H with Portugal, Ghana, Uruguay, and South Korea. Last time I predicted a major upset in this, where I said Ghana would finish second, as I predicted that there could possibly be a comeback made after that 2010 incident. We all know about that. Probably one of the most dramatic World Cup moments in history with Luis Suarez's masterclass in the penalty box. On the surface, though, it really does seem silly to count out Uruguay like that. Also, you could argue that they're aging if they're still playing the likes of Godin, but other young talent coming through. Urayo has been climbing the ranks, obviously, being a key player for Barcelona. Darwin Nunes can easily be a fantastic striker in the tournament, as his form can very much increase as he's just signed for Liverpool. Even though they've already got attackers like Luis Suarez and Edison Cavani, two absolute legends to the game, it's going to be their last go with the national team, so they're going to want to give it their all. I don't want to doubt Uruguay anymore. But at the same time, Ghana are recruiting a lot of new talent. They're attempting to secure Hudson Adoy, Lamptey from Brighton, Inaki and Nico Williams. Ghana's trying to secure all these guys and they would all definitely improve the squad. But at the same time, South Korea is a very exciting underdog as well. Hyung Min's son had a phenomenal season at Tottenham this year. He caught up at the end to Salah to win the Golden Boot along with him, scoring 23 goals, none of them being penalties by the way. 9 assists in 35 matches in the Premier League. He could definitely be hungry to make his country proud in the World Cup. Portugal, I've ripped on Santos in the past, but he has been impressive in the Nations League. And Portugal's squad is just too insane to count out. So much talent has emerged in the back line, in the midfield, and especially in the attack. 
Portugal are ready to do business, and I think they will top this group still. Might not even be the safest pick. I feel like this group still has definitely a potential for an upset to happen. With Ghana securing all these new players to South Korea having great attackers, it still feels so wrong to write off the Uruguay national team at the moment. Although it would be absolutely insane if Ghana could secure the comeback, I'm gonna say that Uruguay make it to the next round. They finish second. Ghana in third, South Korea last. I feel even dirty doing that to South Korea. This is going to be a very interesting group, and I think the point gap will be very close. So good luck to all these teams, but I don't want to rule out the quote-unquote favorites in this group. They're looking too sick lately, and Uruguay, ever since they sacked their long-term coach, they've been improving a lot. So yeah, guys, those are all my updated predictions. This video was super long, so I will be doing a follow-up with the knockouts and all that in the next video smash that like button if you want to see it let's try to hit a bunch of likes again you guys absolutely killed it in the early predictions thank you all very much for that and as always let me know your predictions in the comments below keep in mind no hate is directed to any of these teams and for those of you that are upset with my world cup predictions feel free to go check out my nations league prediction video you'll probably end up feeling a lot better take care